Well, hello. So um, I'm planning to show you again um, how we are going to create a web page from our play, which is currently our Shakespeare play, which is currently in InDesign built for print. Um, and just really want to go through this. I have done a video of this before, but this is in like a sort of an update, um, just covering, making sure that we cover some of the issues uh, that might be encountered depending on how you've actually created your, uh, your play for print. Uh, and I will be going through this uh, one step at a time um, so that you can actually see all, all the stages that we have to go through. Okay, so now the first thing is, I've opened my um, my Shakespeare play. I'm just using the play, not uh, not any. I'm not using any other supplementary material. Just the play itself, and there are just a number of things to point out to you. The first thing is we must make sure that we are going to use images in our play, and those images um, are best anchored within InDesign. Now you can add images into your HTML later, but it's easier if you you can do it in InDesign before you go through this process because the images themselves need to be anchored um, and they will it'll make it a lot easier if you don't actually have to write the code in uh, in HTML. I mean it's your choice but you can do it either way. Anyway so what we have on the screen at the moment is just my my opening page um, and here we can see my dramatis personae. Um, and my first act. Now the first thing to bear in mind is that we need to make sure that when we export this to HTML that all of the paragraph and character styles and object styles actually all create the, the appropriate tags in HTML. So the way that we're going to do this then is to have a look at um, our paragraph styles and in the paragraph styles we can actually do this one for one at a time but it's easier and more makes more sense if you actually use this little uh, hamburger, hamburger menu, as it's called, this context menu at the top right-hand corner. Click on that and then go to uh, Edit All Export Tags. Now in here, this is a little bit, looks a little bit complex. I'm just going to enlarge it up a bit and let, let's see the whole thing. But essentially, you're only really interested in those things that are going to be used in the play. I've got in my case, and it may be the same for you, I've got a lot of styles that are not being used in InDesign. And of course I don't need to worry about those at all. But the ones that I'm using, such as for example Act, there we are, Act, that has a tag of H1 already. Um, and it also is included in the HTML and it has a class name of Act. Now that's because the template that we used initially, that had all of this information in. So most of these things are are perfectly okay, but what you need to maybe have a look at is just to see if there are any styles that you created or that are being used in the play that aren't necessarily uh, weren't in the template. So you've in other words you've customized it. So if we just have a look at this now and look at the look at the the places where we've got the holes, if you like. So character name, for example, is what we're using in the dramatis personae, um, and that currently doesn't have a tag, or at least it's automatic, which means that InDesign will do it for us. Not a good idea because it's it's actually quite hard to identify what that tag is once we get it into HTML. So I'm going to turn that into a paragraph ta tag. And I'm going to give it a, uh, a class name of character name. Now it doesn't have to be the same name as the as the as the style itself, but it certainly helps. It makes it a little bit easier to to understand what we've actually got here. We're not not interested in footnotes. I'm just scrolling through this at the moment. Um, we are, we're not using uh, index, we, we're not using last verse in line particularly, but at least I have that. You can see that I have prose. Oh, here's something that we might need to use. Play location doesn't have uh, a tag. And I'm going to make, again, make that into a P tag. And I'm going to call it uh, play location. That, if you remember, is uh, something that appears um, underneath or the last part of the dramatis personae. So um, let's just go through this again, have a look through. Um, now I've got a song here. So song has a, already does have a tag of P, but it doesn't have a class name. So again, I'm going to put that in as song. 
Um, and I'm just going through this to make sure that there are, there are there. Now, of course, we can revisit this. We can r run through this process of exporting to HTML, and then we can look at our issues that we might encounter and redo it. So it's not uh, like it's if the you know we don't have an opportunity to, um, to 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 change this. So let's just check that everything here is okay. And I say I might need to come back. I'm not. There are some things in here that I'm not using at all. I'm not using footnotes or block quotes or anything like that. Um, now, when you see a little a letter A alongside it on the left hand side, that means it's a character style. So character styles uh, again, we might need to make use of those. So let's have a look. We've it, here we've got, for example, character role is a span tag, a span tag being an inline tag. So if you look at this list that we've got available to us, we've got the ability to have a span tag, which is effectively like a generic tag, which for which we would need to add a class name, of course. Um, but em is emphasized, short for emphasized, meaning that it will automatically in HTML be italicized. Uh, strong is normally going to be bold. So those are those are the three that we've got available to us. But if we use a span tag, then what we can do is to give it a class name. Um, you'll see how that works when we get into the uh, HTML. Um, now, beyond listing on, on the left hand side here, listing beyond the um, the character styles, you can also see there are object styles. So you can see here that we've got um, the introduction, the outer image, the play. Now the thing about these is that they're not really um, well. We we can we can do these independently or separately within the object styles, but we can do it here. So I'm going to select play. Now play is basically the object where all of the play sits. So it's actually a text box effectively. That is the object, um, and in here you'll see that we've actually got div or span available to us. But actually, I'm going to type in here, type in directly section. So I can do that. I don't have to choose from the drop down list. I can type things in here. So play is a section in itself. Um, and I'm going to give that a name of a class name of play, needless to say. Now the dramatis personae again is a block on its own, so it's it's in its own text box. It's not threaded to the rest of the document. Um, again, this is something that you uh, that you will uh, uh, I'm sure know from what you've done with your print work. Um, and I'm going to now give that a section name, and I'm going to give that a class name of dramatis, like that. Now scene image, um, well that. You will, you possibly will be using images uh, with within an object style called scene image, but you may not. But I, I'm, I'm going to actually do it for myself again. I'm going to leave this uh, in here, uh, but this time I'm going to call this figure. So, in other words, the image itself was sit in t in a block with a identified as a figure. Um, and again, I can just keep the I can keep the actual name scene image. Um, I don't think we've got anything in preface image at all. Um, I don't see that as being a problem. I can't see anything else here that I would need, except that I will want to also create, um, I'll do that in, in a moment when we've when we've done this, I will need to create another object for our table of contents, but I'm coming come on to that in a moment. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, I'm going to click OK. So that now should sort that out. Now the the next this does bring me to the next part of this, which is to actually create the table of contents. Now I know that we've already produced the table of contents when we put this into a whole book, um, but we're only dealing with the play now. So what we want to do is to create a table of contents for the play. This will actually become our navigation because it's going to be interactive. It allows us to go straight to a particular scene or particular act. So what I need to do then is to find a place to put it. So building the table of contents is quite straightforward. Um, we need to do this by going to the layout, table of contents. And then what we need to do is to look at all those items that we want to include in our table of contents. It's quite simple, really. We just want the dramatis personae 
or the title for that. We want the acts and then the scenes, obviously sort of in a diff on a different level, as you'll see. So let's start off with the Dramatis Personae. Okay, add that in. Now the important thing is that we want to use the appropriate styles. Um, and I'm going to uh, use um, the TOC heading one for this level. We don't need the page numbers, so we're just turning that off. And if you can't see all of this stuff down here, remember, you might only be seeing it like this, so, so with fewer options, so click there to get more options. Now we're going to look for the act, add that in. Now that should be at the same level. Automatically it'll go down to level two, but I want to bring that down to level one. And uh, again, I'm going to use TOC heading one as my style. And I'm going to turn off the page numbers. OK, now what I'm going to do is to look for the scene or the first scene, I should say. I'm adding that in. That should be at level two. So that's correct. Um, and again, I'm, this time I'm going to go to TOC heading two as the next sort of level, if you like. We, do, we, we you'll see how this works in a moment and then we're going to turn off the page numbering again for that uh, we just now need to find the scene because don't forget in my case anyway I've got two versions of the scene again make sure that you bring that down to level two because we make it will automatically go to level three when it's you know obviously the next thing that you choose so make sure that you turn that off and then we go down here to top heading two and we also turn off the page number now that should be all right we don't really need um, the contents heading in here um, but I can I can just leave it in there for the moment. We will probably need to remove it because we're not using it in a sense like a traditional table of contents. We're actually going to be using it as a navigation section. Um, so we can actually turn that off. But I think we will we will have to include it initially. So I'm just going to go for a basic paragraph, for example. OK, so let's just go for that. Uh, click on OK. Now I'm going to just put it over here on my pasteboard initially. Uh, as you can see, you can hardly actually see it um, because what I'm going to do is to take this title and move it off. I'm not I just want to uh, I don't really need to add any pages. Uh, so I'm just going to move that over to there. Then I'm going to bring this over onto here. Now you can see that I actually have here everything styled accordingly. I've got the these bullets. Uh, this is a bulleted text, but I'm going to show you how you need to do that for yourself if you don't already have that. So what we're looking at here are two different styles. I've got TOC heading one and TOC heading two. So if we have a look, for example, at TOC heading one, I'm just going to bring that up onto the screen here. Um, what I've actually got here are bullets, bulleted text. So click on bullets there and you see you need to make sure that you're using a list type of bullets um, and then the bullet character, although the bullet character is not that really significant because we're going to turn that off anyway. But that is what it is. Now that will be at level one. And so that should be fair enough. If we now cancel that and look at uh, the other uh, style that we're using, which is TOC heading two, that should also be, uh, when we look at bullets and numbering, that should also be bullets using that bullet character. And but this will be at level two. Now I think for some, if that hasn't, if that doesn't appear like that, I don't think it matters that much. It's just that basically you just need to make sure that you've got that in uh, in the um, uh, in in the in the the actual table of contents they need to be nested um, or at the, at the right level so level one and level two and then that should automatically uh, work um, I don't think I don't see any any reason why that shouldn't work but um, but do let me know if uh, anybody needs any help with that okay so let's actually move on to this right so now that that's done um, I just now need to make sure that I put these different objects into our articles panel um, so that they then will appear in the right order so what all we were going to want then is our dramatis personae to begin with 
um, I'm sorry, our table of contents to begin with, then our dramatis personae, then the play. And so what we need to do then is to use the articles panel. So I'm going to my window articles, the articles panel here. So that's just at the moment currently empty. So I'm just going to drag this object into here and call it my talk. I'm also going to drag these objects in here. So I'm selecting all of these or you can either put them into the articles panel and then um, say that you don't want to export them or if you prefer maybe it's easier just to just to simply delete them because we don't need them in this version. Um, we don't need the title at all in this version because we're going to be adding that in uh, later on into our HTML as you will see. So we've got our table of contents in there. Now let's scroll to the next place and we're going to add the Dramatis Personae in here. We can give it the name of Dramatis, although to be honest it's not really that important about the naming in the articles panel. And then all we need to do now is to add the play into there. Now the thing about the play is of course it's a long, 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 long threaded document and all you're doing is you're adding in that one first uh, the first text box because they're all threaded together it regards it as a complete unit now um, this is important to know though because if anybody has something slightly different if you've actually split your document into different text boxes uh, throughout the play for example so if you've taken each uh, act as a different text box then obviously that's going to be slightly different but generally speaking I think most of us have got everything threaded into one place so that's fine. So that's our that's basically the articles panel, which you'll see is important because of the way that we export this. Now, um, the next thing I should do um, before we forget is that we need to make sure that all of these objects, these three objects, also have object level labeling and styling. Um, and the way that we do that is to go to our object styles. So object styles are just another styling area, if you like. And you, I mean, I've got them actually set up on my, in my, in my workflow, but you can, um, if you want to find out where that is, you go to window, styles, and then object styles. As you can see, it's one of those items there. Right, so now having selected this object, I need to now, because this is a new thing, we've created the table of contents in here. This now needs a new object. And, I, and all we need to do basically is to go to our object styles. Let me just drag that over and get it a bit nearer. So this now um, is where we create our new object. So we do that by clicking that little plus sign there, which is then making an object style number one. I'm just going to call this talk. Now, we, there's a lot of things that we can set in here, but we're not interested in styling this in any way. This is not, we're not, because we're not working for print, we don't need to style this object. Um, all we really need to do is to set the object export options. That is, uh, if you ha can't see it initially, it's scroll down to the bottom of this. So this is our export tagging. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to turn that into a section so type actually type in section, give it a class name. Um, oh, no, I, I, I've made a mistake there. I made a mistake. Stop everything. That shouldn't be called section. My, my mistake. That should be called nav. So NAV, we need to call that nav. Um, we don't necessarily have to have a class name on it because we've only got one nav in the whole document. Um, but if you want to call it uh, talk, that would be fine too, or anything that you like. So it gives it a class name as well, just, just for completeness really, but it doesn't need it. We can just simply give it one name, the tag name of nav. Okay, so let's actually say okay to that. Uh, so that's done that one. Now, if we now move on to the Dramatis Personae, that already has an object style set in it. I, I mean, let's put it this way, mine does, because I used the template and I've used exactly what, what was in the template. If you haven't got it set as an object, in other words, if it's none, you need to make sure that you choose the, uh, the object that's already in the template or create a new one. It, it doesn't really matter. So, so basically, we now need to look at that, the attributes in there, and look at export tagging 
and as you can see that already is working it's a section and it has the class name of Dramatis so that's fine for me I'm okay with that now we're going to go to the play and select the play um, in my case that hasn't been attached to the play object so I'm going to simply attach it to the play object and then I'm going to t double click on that and then I shall go to export tagging to make sure that that is correct so mine is correct it says section for the tag name and play for the class name so it looks like we're we're good to go for that so now before we go any further um, what I want to do is to look at um, a couple of different issues that we might encounter and this is a dependent upon how you have created your own print version now um, the first thing is the dramatis persona now as you can see with mine and many of you have got the same situation uh, we created this with a table now it's perfectly possible to construct this um, at, with a table um, and to do that you know in HTML so we'll export as a table for HTML and that will work well okay it will work but um, it's quite complex uh, to try to style this particularly since we have this um, this this curly bracket um, that in my case is actually you know indicating the fairies in the play and some of you have got something like that now that is actually quite a challenge to make that work in HTML so I'm going to suggest to for those of you that don't want to submit to that complex challenge I'm going to make a suggestion and two different options that you might have the first option uh, would be that you could take the table um, and actually just simply delete that column where you've got those curly brackets this is obviously going to be dependent on how you've actually constructed this if you've done it my way which is to put an extra column there for that curly bracket then you just simply go to table and we are simply going to uh, delete that column like so now this does mean that I have to remove that little object there because that's going to be in our way um, the other thing is that what we might need to do is we might need to take this uh, this this t this um, cell in here because at the moment what I've got is a cell which is merged or a number of cells which are merged to accommodate that one word so again if I go to my table uh, I can unmerge those those cells so now we should have the cells and what we therefore need to do is to repeat this so I'm going to actually just copy and paste that into there so that I've got it in all those times now don't worry about the fact that we've got some uh, these things are crashing into one another in in a sense there's no space between the the words but that's that's okay because we can address that when we come to work with the styling so so this is um, this is one option we will simply uh, take this uh, and export it out as a table it will become a table in HTML so that's that's one option okay and I'm going to I'm not going to do that in this case but that was that is one option the other way that we can do it is we can simply select the table uh, and then we can go here and convert that table to text now we've actually got um, a column separator of a tab and I'm going to turn that into uh, that would that should work if I just do this okay so now we've actually got this um, the only problem is that we will ultimately need to take this part here I think actually if I just look at the style for this so in our paragraph so this is character name and our character name we just need to check that we've got a right alignment for that so we need to change that back to left alignment like that and then you'll notice that we've actually got a tab between them so that again that's going to collapse when we go into HTML so we will need to uh, to change that so again I think all we need here is for there to be a space between these things um, so what we can do is to change this to a space um, and that's quite easy to, to do you can do it uh, by search and replace if you want so uh, just select this and then go to find 
and then we're working on the selection so we're actually looking for a tab character and we're changing it to a space okay there we are so that's that will of course simplify things for our HTML as you'll see uh, let's just make sure that we don't have any other tabs in here I'm just going to get rid of those as well there may be some tidying up that we need to do um, it's not necessarily perfect right now but anyway that's that's certainly okay in in a, in a sense that we've actually now got the this is a character style uh, called character role and this is now the whole of the line is just set as a you know paragraph style called character name so that will work perfectly fine for our html okay so um, I think we're just about ready to try an export now. Um, oh yes, just one more thing as well. Um, you also will need, as you'll see in a moment when we come to do the export process, you also will need um, a CSS file to attach to this. Uh, now I know that we haven't really edited the CSS for our HTML in the play yet, but we have got one ready to, to work with. Um, and this is actually something you're going to find um, you're going to be given access to. So I will make sure that there's a link to it. And once you've got that, then you'll see that we can actually attach that as we export. So let's go through that process then. Um, we don't necessarily need any of this on the screen here. I'm going to move this back over to my styles panel. And now we're going to find file export which you'll find about in the middle there. And we are now exporting for HTML. Now, um, again, another important thing, uh, actually, I'm going to stop that because there's one thing I've forgotten to mention. It's quite important that you're, when we construct this uh, HTML um, document, what we're actually doing is we're trying to make something with a navigation. So we want to make sure that when we click on the items that are currently in our table of contents. It takes us to the place within the play. Now there's two things that we need to make sure of to get that to work. One is that we need to have a look again at our table of contents. Let's get that out of the way. Um, <clears throat> and we're, I'm gonna go back to my table of contents. Um, and one of the things that we need to make sure of is that we make the text anchor in the source paragraph. That means that essentially it will uh, link the two things together. So you're going to find that what you've actually got in your table of contents will actually link to the right, the appropriate place in the in the document. Now, the other thing that makes it work is that we need to make sure that the name of our HTML document is appropriate and the way that it's named when we actually export it the name of this uh, html document will be based on the name of your indesign document now if you can see up in the top left hand corner uh, my document is called play for web dot ind now if you have a name with spaces in this is going to cause you some issues so my advice at this stage would be to wait to stop a moment to save this as a different name if you've got spaces in the name just do that once here because that's going to make life a lot easier so in other words if I've got spaces in the name here save it without the spaces in the name or put underscores or whatever you like and then um, what you should do is to go back to your table of contents and just simply redo the table of contents because it what you're going to find is that the an actual link within the table of contents to somewhere else in the document does refer to the whole name of your document and if you've currently got a space in the name that's going to be uh, an issue if you then change the name then the, the these things are not going to work though the link won't work the hyperlink won't work so two things then to make sure of no spaces in the name for your play and then make sure that you've updated this if you have renamed it. And when you update it, again, make sure that under the table of contents, you are making the text anchor in the source paragraph. OK, so now we can go for it. So I'm now going to export to HTML. 
uh, and I'm putting it in a particular location. Now, again, another w uh, word of warning here. What's actually going to happen is it's going to create the HTML file, but it's also going to create a folder with all of your assets in it. So, for example, images, CSS will be inside another folder. So I therefore advise you to create at this stage as you export it, create a folder somewhere uh, where this work will be. The reason is we want actually a project for the play, uh, you know, as a separate entity, in other words, in its own isolated folder, not within all of your other content. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go in here, which is where my where my work is. So I'm going to go to new for make a new folder and I'm going to call this play three because I've already done a, for a few other versions. So play version three. And I'm now going to save that now. Um, OK, so what we need here, a few things uh, we need to export the whole document, not a selection. We need to also make sure that we're using same as articles panel, because remember, we've actually put our things into the articles panel. That's the order in which we want them to appear. We also want to make sure that our bulleted uh, items come out as ULs or an unordered lists in our HTML. Now, with regard to images, uh, we want to make sure that the I would advise you to go for the original size of the images. So I would go for that. Um, I would also make sure that you don't use fixed, but you use relative to text flow. So in other words, it means that we can adjust the size of the image to a percentage, maybe depending on, um, you know, what size it is. We, we don't want to necessarily be make it restricted. We want to be able to make this uh, a responsive web page so that the image size changes dependent upon the device that we use. So we want to make sure that that's relative to text flow. Um, again, you can decide this for yourself, but I would go for the highest possible quality. Um, it, it, there's no reason we're not looking for worrying about disk space or anything here for the moment. So let's go for the ma maximum quality for all of our images. Now under advanced, under the advanced tab, you basically um, want to include the classes in the HTML. So in other words, where we've actually added a class name in our uh, object styles or our paragraph styles, when, when, when we did that for the export tagging, you want to include that. However, you don't want to ask InDesign to create a CSS file for us. We don't want to do that. We're going to turn that off because we're going to add our own CSS. Now you'll find this CSS sort of like a, like a boilerplate CSS file with all of the uh, empty elements in it, ready to put the styling in. You will find that uh, available for you. So I'm going to now add that style sheet. I just need to locate it. So I've got it here. It's called play.css. OK, so that's going to be added in. So now we're, we're ready to go. So I'm going to click on that and that should automatically open in a web browser, which you can't necessarily see. But I'm going to bring that over onto the screen. OK, so here is our um, table of contents at the top then. And it, it, this should actually take us to the appropriate place. So that just clicking on there. Now, obviously, at the moment, it doesn't look like anything particularly interesting. Um, but we've basically got the we've got the bare bones of it now. And so all we need to do really is to start working on the styling for this. Um, and the way that we do this, of course, is to use VS Code to do this. So I'm going to now go out to my finder and locate where that's uh, where that's been put. Uh, so we've actually got here. So here's my play. So this is this is what's been created. Um, and in fact, I'm going to. So this, again, is important because VS Code when we use VS Code, we want to open a folder rather than an individual uh, file. Because if we open the whole folder, then it's effectively our project and we've got the links to the various assets inside that project. So what we I go back one level and what I'm going to do then is to take this uh, Play 3 that I've just created, this one down here that I've just highlighted, I'm going to drag that onto my uh, VS Code application. 
yes, I trust this. Okay, so here we have over on the left hand side, you can see what we've got. We've got the play. There is the play in, in all its glory of, of uh, uh, HTML. And here we have all of the assets. So we've got the CSS and we've got the various images that I've also got in my version. So I'm basically now what I'm, I'm not, I don't want to edit this if I can at all help it. Um, apart from the fact that I might actually just <coughs> remove that. That's, I'm not really needing that at all. But bear in mind, of course, is that as you, if you do make any changes to the HTML, then it does mean that when, you, if you do another, if you have another go at this and you want to go back to InDesign because you want to make some changes and then re-export to HTML, you're going to overwrite any changes. So I would, I would advise against making any dramatic changes in the HTML. And of course, it's quite hard to do that anyway, because as you can see, it's, it's quite complex. If we just scroll through here, you can see, you know, how we how we've actually got everything. Um, all of these things are there are three blocks of information. And in fact, one of the things that you can do with VS Code is you can actually um, isolate these by just simply clicking this just down down arrow. And so you can see effectively that's the nav. That's the dramatis. And that's the play. So we've simply got those three objects. Um, and then you can simply expand uh, them up. So looking at our um, table of contents here, or our navigation item, can you sort of see what we've actually got here? We've got a list item here with the class name of TOC heading one, but you can see the actual link is the name of the document and then to the anchor point, which is uh, obviously down in the Dramatis Personae. In fact, you can maybe just identify that because we, that's actually quite close. Just down here, here's the Dramatis, and this has a section ID here, uh, a text anchor 000, which is this item here. Okay, so that's actually created a text anchor which is what is now going to uh, going to that point. So the, this is the way that it's working. Although again, you don't need to necessarily make any any changes to this at all. If I save it, yeah, when you save it, you see what actually happens is it kind of tidies it up a bit. It, it does actually make it a lot longer the text, but it does tidy it up a bit and give you give you much more of a clue as to how the the hierarchy within this table of contents is, is actually working. But what you'll notice though is that anyway is that we've actually now got a link to this CSS file here which is over here and this is where we want to make the changes. Um, so for example if we look at these two sections here the Dramatis and the Play uh, we, we can do things like um, let's say we just basically give this a Let's just for the moment give it a background color of uh, silver, and uh, and we'll actually give it a width of uh, seventy percent, and we'll also center it. So we'll give it a margin, um, we'll margin at the top and bottom. Well, maybe at the top and bottom, we we'll just give it a. 12 pixel, but we'll actually make it auto left and right so that it basically then will um, obviously be set into the middle of the page. So in fact, we can do this the same for, for both of these, for the play like that. Now we haven't got a nav in here, so we can actually change that in a moment. But I, I mean, in some ways, w what we're actually now doing is more complex and I probably should just give you a clue, a few clues as to what you can do. But essentially, you need to play with the, all of these elements and try to achieve uh, your styling for the whole play. Uh, let's actually just have a look and see what this looks like by making this go live. OK, so there you see, I've just simply created those two elements there. And you can see that the play itself is also that width. Um, but what I can also do, and if we, again, we should maybe just investigate the, the way that the 
um, the way that our, uh, our our images are working. And I'm just going to go to my first image, which is here. And as you can see, we've got a figure there. So in we've got a figure because we put that into a an object and then called it figure. So we basically have figure wrapped around each of the images. So again, I, I can use that as a way of controlling the width of my images. So let's actually take a look at that. I'm going to go in here and say for my figure, uh, my figure uh, will be have a width of uh, say 70 percent I mean just for this just to get it right to begin with um, and then our image the image tag which is inside that the image inside that is going to have a width of a hundred percent if we save it okay so now we have the image set like that um, so yeah, so we've, so the basically the figure is seventy percent of the overall object in which it's contained, which is at the moment the object called play. So obviously, if we change this to a hundred percent, then that will be the full width, like so. So what we would need to do then is to make sure that um, that we don't have any. Oh yeah, so, so we've got a margin there, a figure. So we should take out the margin here. And we should take out the margin here. Okay, so that sets it in, in, the, in the middle. So there's quite a lot to do here. Now, <clears throat> there is one other um, issue for some of you which is that you would have used a way to put the character name on the same line as the first line of the speech. And you can see how that's working here, and it, or I should say it's not working, um, because basically we've just got no space between there, because that was originally would have been a span tag. So I've actually got some uh, something I can use there to make sure that that actually works properly for us. And I'm just going to locate that for myself here. Just bear with me a second. Right. I'm just going to paste this in and then I shall explain how it's actually working. Now, um, You'll notice that this is now put this over here. Now, obviously, I, I've got some other controls that I want to adapt here. Maybe I want to make this a slightly larger and so on. But um, here's the code here uh, uh, for that. The reason that we've got that and, and why it might not work for you, it just depends on what you have actually got in your style name for this span. There's a span wrapping around this. And so what we actually need to do is to make sure that that span tag is appropriately applied. So if we look, go down here and have a look at um, our first. So what we're looking at is this first line here, which I've highlighted. So for those of you that haven't actually done this, you don't need to worry. But if you've done this, you need to use that piece of that CSS that I've just applied. Because basically, uh, we've got a span tag wrapping around the actual name of the character. There it is. Uh, and But the whole of the line is just simply in verse line. So this part here needs some special CSS attached to it. And the CSS that we've got here makes use of a positioning so it's using relative positioning and so it's basically moving it as you can see minus 7 em to the left and it's moving it up to the top by a certain amount uh, and it's also changing the font size so it's doing all of these things for you and i'm basically going to give this to you for those of you that have that issue Okay, so I think uh, really at this stage I'm going to stop there and, and we'll move on to making some work, doing some work with the CSS uh, in, a in the next video.